Which mistake did you make as a teenager is still biting you in the butt until now? Not wearing my seat belt. At least my wheelchair is fast. Punching a wall. Hit the stud. The fracture in my hand didn't properly heal as well as losing the use of two of my tendons which makes opening my hand a nuisance. As you could imagine it was my dominant hand. My life isn't heck from it but boy if I could go back in time to my teenage years. That's when I'd go. Please please please. If you ever feel like you need to hit something for whatever reason please hit something soft and not living. Like a pillow. Your delicate hands will thank you down the road. Thank you for specifying the not living part. Nicotine. Smoked a pack a day for almost 15 years. Started when I was 16 17 finally quit 100% about a year ago when my wife and I found out we were expecting. I've been really good and haven't had a single smoke. But I'm not gonna lie. At least once a day I think dang a cigarette would be good right now. My father, 77 now, quits in his early 40s. To this day is happy he quit. To this day, craves that cigarette. He has done it. You'll too. I said a lot of stupid crap with my actual name as the username on social media. Thankfully I have a common name but it will be in the back of my head for the rest of my life. Hello. John Smith. Sharing needles with other people. When I was 16. Spent the next 40 years with hepatitis C and did two unsuccessful interferon treatments that lasted a total of 22 months. Fortunately, got cured in 2015 with a 90 day treatment of Harvoni, but still, I spent a lot of time effort during some very important years trying to get well. Oh man my father in law contracted it, working at a landfill site and accidentally stood on a needle that went through his boat. He was sick for a long time. Glad you're cured now man. Dropping out of college to get married. Going back in my 30s with adult responsibilities and a full time job was the most chaotic time of my life. I'll be 31 with 2 kids, a 2 year old and a 1 year old. When I get BBS next May, I frickin feel you're on that one. Blindly accepting college loans assuming future me would be able to handle it. Future me is now present me and it's not very enjoyable. Hiding my then geek interests reading books, pen and paper role playing, video games, etc. In order to be accepted by my classmates. And then when I found other people who were into that stuff they at first didn't want to talk to me because they thought I was a normie. Developing a drug habit. So much wasted time and money on short lived experiences. I feel you my friend. And a lot of memories you don't even remember. Not going out with friends enough. I would often turn down invites out and now everyone is busy with their own lives and meeting can be hard sometimes. Not asking my parents for help with finding things I really enjoyed doing. I think maybe if I'd joined a chess club or something like that, I'd actually have had a lot more fun and made some friends. I was really lonely for a long time and it wasn't easy to make up for the lack of social development during those important years. It's not so much of an issue now, but it really bit me in the butt when I tried to make it on my own. I was incredibly lazy and unambitious. I didn't have any job experience, any extracurricular activities, no hobbies, no clubs. I had nothing going for me. It's pretty hard to get hired based on nothing but your own assurance that you'll do a good job. My mom was always too scared I'd hurt myself during PE class in school, so she always would write me notes to give to the gym teacher that I couldn't participate in class. Every single day, I wanted to tell my mom I wanted to not just participate in class, but that I also wanted to play sports, but I didn't. That's my mistake. The last time I exercised was probably 12 years old. I'm 27 in a few weeks and my body is like that of a 55 year old man. I can't stand up straight. My knees are killing me. My heart rate increases to around 140 bpm if I so much as even walk more than 100 feet. I can't lift anything more than 25 ish pounds. If I sit down I need someone to help get me off the ground. If I sit in a chair I need to take about 3 seconds to lift off the chair. But like OP said, until now, I have been walking 0.25 miles every single day, pushing myself harder and harder, for the past 6 days. My goal is to just be able to walk 10 miles. My ultimate goal is to straighten up my back, 
be able to run 5k and get rid of all this fat on my body. Already got my binge eating halfway under control. One step at a time. 27 is young you can recover. Healthy diet and good sleep and exercise are habits that take years to learn. Don't give up. I started smoking. I want to go back and shake 15 year old me who thought buying cigarettes with my lunch money would cause weight loss. I am 50 now, and quit smoking when I was in my mid 40s, but the damage done to my lungs and heart is permanent. I got a fitness watch 3 years after I quit, and it says that my fitness age, based on VO2 and exercise tolerance, is still that of a 70 year old, even though I exercise every day. For me what worked was forcing myself to smoke mindfully. I decided that what I was going to do is really pay attention while having a cigarette, instead smoking while doing something else, even something as simple as having a conversation. When you force yourself to really concentrate hard on all aspects of smoking while you are doing it, how it makes your body feel, how your heart races, the taste it leaves in your mouth, the smell it leaves on your fingers and your clothes, how disgusting that ashtray looks and smells it doesn't take long for you to become aware of how gross smoking actually is. And then you can call that to mind when you're struggling with cravings. Also, nicotine cravings rarely last more than a minute they keep coming back at first. So it might literally be one minute on, one minute off. But if you force yourself to focus on how gross a cigarette actually is instead of I need nicotine, those minutes are a lot easier to endure. And over time they decrease greatly in frequency. If you want this idea hammered home in book form, Try the easy way to quit smoking by Alan Carr but when I say hammered home I mean it. It's really as simple as what I said above. I was a 2 pack a day smoker for 30 years and believed with all my heart until the last 6 months that I love smoking. If I can quit, anyone can. I told my 15 year daughter not to smoke now she's 24 and admits she wishes she listened. Currently having the same argument with my 17 year but she knows better. Never learn to do anything that I wasn't forced to do. So I lack the discipline to do things I want to do and don't have the social skills required to meet people because it wasn't something I had to do. I guess it's a simple fix but it's not easy. So many things are simple, but not easy. Learning to study. Cost me 2 years of university tuition to learn and wreck my GPA. Tried to fit in too much. It made me realize I had the wrong group surrounding me. After HS, I cut everyone off. Don't have many friends now but I'd rather wait to make friends that I know I'm able to connect with as me, not as someone I'm trying to be. Not beating the crap out of my stepdad. Gary if you see this, I'm gonna frick you up. Such a freaking Gary thing. Frick Gary. Not paying attention in math class because I was good at math. Math lessons are compounding so if you don't learn how to do algebra properly for example then you'll struggle with subsequent lessons. I was always good at math when it finally clicked, but the problem was that it was so frustrating when it wouldn't click, which was more and more often later in school, that I gave up. Never telling the girls that I liked that I liked them. Years later, three different ones told me, I liked you when we were in middle school high school. I never had the confidence to let them know and I think about it every now and then. Being a bad friend. I sometimes feel random guilt towards people that cut me off because of things I did. And that's okay that they got away and got space. But I wish I could apologize. Now ages after, it would just be weird. I was bullied until 9th grade. In 10th grade I switched schools, became popular and I influenced all my new friends to drink, smoke, party and skip class. No one in my group graduated and I feel it was my fault. I never learned how to actually do my work without procrastinating. I'm 40 and upper management at my company I still do all my work a couple days before it's due. Not taking the time to be a child. I was always independent and pretty much spent all my time working to make money. Now that I'm an adult, that's all I really do too. I wish I fricked around more. Worked less when I didn't need to. They say youth is wasted on the young. You can still have fun now. Don't repeat your own history and end up saying the same thing when you're old about your younger adult self. Seize the day, stranger. Probably only women of a certain age will understand this, but over plucking my eyebrows. The late 90s sperm brows that were in fashion were my jam and they have never grown back. 
Almost 30 years later, every day I have to pencil them in, or look ridiculous. Not learning to drive. My parents didn't want to pay the fee for the class my school offered and said they'd just teach me. They never did. Now I can't afford classes as an adult. Assuming you're from the US, it's fairly easy to just practice if you have somebody's automobile you can drive around in parking lots and side streets, etc. I never paid for any classes. I went and got my license when I turned 18 without doing much besides the final exam they make you take. The actual test to get your license is laughably easy and makes it almost impossible to fail. Buying into the gifted child rhetoric. It's exciting when everything comes easily, but it also means I never established good study work habits and it's been a be slowly rectifying that. And when I encounter something that I am immediately not good at, I have a hard time sticking through to get better. Smoking copious amounts of weed daily. I still love weed but I wish I'd waited till I was a bit older to smoke so heavily. I'm never as present as I used to be. My short term memory is spent and I don't know how to self soothe because I always just turn to smoking a J. Allowing my older sister's endless success to cause me to really hate myself. I've always loved my sister and do not in any ways blame her but I heard a lot of teachers ask me if I was sure I was actually her brother or tell me I miss your sister. She was so smart. For some people it may have lit a fire under them but for me it just led to thinking everything was pointless because no matter what I do I won't be as good as her. I'm in my mid 20s now and I'm only just starting to believe I'm capable of anything. I'm by no means a stupid man but 12 years of being belittled like that, it convinced me I was. I think now if I had stood up for myself and maybe even gone to a higher authority in the schools about it I would have been better off. Moral of the story, you are not your siblings and anyone who thinks you should be isn't worth your time. Not knowing how to communicate with girls, having no mom and no sisters left me without any reference. I was not shy, simply didn't know what the heck I should talk with girls about in conversations. Later I discovered I should just go about them as any other human being. I wasted good years trying to imitate what I thought I could learn from popular culture about the opposite gender. Later I discovered I should just go about them as any other human being. Something a huge amount of guys have never learned. Turns out women are people, despite what some guys will tell you. Wanting to ruin my brain and train of thought through drugs. Now I can't think and my brain is always working against me. I feel yeah. I remember drinking myself unconscious every night trying to get dumber because I always overthought everything. But now I'm in the sciences and I'm pretty much fine but I'm sure I'd be having an easier time if I'd skipped that stage. Got a credit card at 18 with no experience in managing money. That was fun. But it was definitely not fun for a lot longer. Hahaha, <laughs> an old co-worker of mine was applying for a Discover card on our break about a year ago. She got accepted and all that crap. Her first reaction was I got $5,000. And that was when she had about 4 people forcing basic credit finance info down her throat. Bless her heart, I hope she didn't spend all of it, to be 19 again. Probably not pushing for enough mental help. Was a really talented student but family sucked about doing treatment for mental health. Thought me being depressed was me being lazy, as told to me by my mom. It would definitely have allowed me at minimum to have my high school diploma instead of a GED. Also would have prevented me from half of my less than ideal situations friends put me in as well as less judgement for how I finished school. I'd probably feel less lost too, had I fully threw myself into personal finance. Would be nice knowing how to actually handle more intricate money matters. Not wearing hearing protection to band jams and concerts. Now I'm hard of hearing and my ears ring 2 4 7 3 6 5 days a year. Never asking that one girl you had a big crush on. Only to later find out she actually in fact did like me back and all I had to do was ask. Second guessing is a heck of a drug and now I don't even take chances anymore. Everyone says this. I asked several girls I liked out, yet all said no. Now I don't even try with girls anymore. Not getting braces. Teenager me thought my wonky teeth didn't look too bad and gave me character. Really it just made me look perpetually young. 
There isn't enough space on the internet for me to list them all. Notable however, flunking out of college because 18 stroke 19 year old me would rather get fricked up on a weeknight than go to class and study. Then shortly thereafter, turning down a guaranteed spot in the millwrights union because I'm going to go back to college, which predictably never happened. I didn't make much of an effort to apply to colleges, it was a last minute decision. I think that if I had applied myself, I could have gotten into a really good college with some financial assistance, but instead I coasted and chose the local commuter school. I did well there and afterwards, but I still think about what life would be like if I had really worked for it in high school. I went to a fancy college, didn't help me with my career, but helped me with learning and growing as a person and intellectual. I'm poor, but I love to learn. Not getting in shape and the habit of being in shape. Depression has prevented me from being able to hold a stable routine for almost anything outside of work since I was 18. If I'd built up some muscle mass earlier even my depression would have been less problematic. I cut myself when I was about 12-14. I still have the scars on my upper thighs, and it's obvious what they're from. I got some tattoos in an attempt to cover them, but there's still a few that are just too big and too noticeable for that to really work. Really wish I hadn't done it because there's just no getting rid of the scars and they make me very self-conscious. There are some things I just can't wear because of them and it sucks. Permanently damaging my hearing with loud music, guns and being in a garage band. I now have permanent hearing loss and persistent tinnitus. The constant ringing drives me insane sometimes. As a Canadian, not learning French. For some reason it's an option once you reach grade 7, and everybody switches because learning the basics of a new language is easier than learning intermediate advanced French. So not only are students encouraged to switch to a different language because they'll get better grades, but emo languages like Japanese or German are just more fun, especially if all of your friends are taking one of them. The unfortunate thing is that switching languages is shooting yourself in the foot should you ever get a job with the government. It's more difficult to even get a job, and once you do get one you can get less pay and it's more difficult to progress your career. I have no idea why such an important decision is given to little children. Honestly, I think every Canadian should have to speak both English and French fluently. Your average Canadian will never need Spanish or German, so why even give kids the choice? And before anybody says why don't you just learn French now I'm trying. I recently made a bet that I would learn French if the Montreal Canadiens beat the Toronto Maple Leafs in the playoffs, which they did, so I made a Duolingo subscription. However, as an adult I just don't have the time or motivation to learn a language, so the progress has been discouragingly slow. Doing everything as I was told and without complaining, even if it made me feel uncomfortable. Now I'm an adult with anxiety. Getting fat. People that have never been fat have no clue what it's like, and people that have always been fat have no idea what being not fat is like. Crap sucks, yo. Same. I didn't actually get fat until I was an adult but it was absolutely a direct result of my teenage choices and lack of useful education about how to remain healthy. Not going to a good therapist as a teenager. Saw one early 20s that helped me work on expressing my emotions. I bottled them down and eventually early 20s they all came back up. If I pushed this and figured it out as an early teen, I could have bettered my whole life. Earlier than a teenager, but I had my very first cigarette at the age of 9. An adult thought it would be cute. Unfortunately, I didn't think that tobacco was yucky. I finally quit in my early 40s. Slightly off topic but there was a thread the other day about some of the scariest things people had experienced or some of the worst nightmares they'd had and I hate to say it but this thread is far scarier than either of them because of how relatable these things are. But to young people reading this thread I will say this, if you're looking to someone for approval to do why you want to do or be who you truly are, it may never actually come. The best time to do that thing was when you first thought of it, the second best time is now. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.